Hey everybody, I'm here with a video for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So speaking of offensive, those of you who are hardcore Counter-Strike players and already know exactly what you're doing with this game probably want to avoid this video. This is more of a introductory kind of new player, do I want to buy this game, do I not want to buy this game, what's this whole Counter-Strike thing about sort of deal. So uh, by all means, go check out some of my other videos. I got lots of DayZ videos. I got some Lord of the Rings, some Sanctum, whatever. Go check those out. But uh, if you already own Counter-Strike, if you already play it, this is probably not for you. All right. I think they're all gone. Sweet. OK, so I've been wanting to do a video for this game ever since I started playing the beta a couple of weeks ago. and. Uh, it occurred to me that most people who own this game or are already interested in this game don't really need to see a video about it. You know, I was talking to some friends uh, over this past week about this game and I realized that the only people for whom a video is going to be at all interesting are people who A, have never played Counter-Strike before, or B, uh, maybe have played it a long time ago and gotten sort of alienated by the community or otherwise turned off to it um, you know because of how kind of hardcore and unwelcoming the community can be uh, so I wanted to do a video about this particular version of the game a because it's brand new just came out on Steam and B because I think of all of the versions of Counter-Strike that I've played uh, which would be you know, 1.6 and Source, so as far as I know, that's every version that matters. I think there was some crazy version of Counter-Strike for the original Xbox that I never saw, but all that aside, I think that this version does the most that you're ever going to see Counter-Strike do to try to accommodate new players. So I wanted to kind of touch on some of those features and give people a general idea of what the game is all about so that they can make up their own minds about whether this game is for them. So, without further ado, let's jump in. So, one thing I'm going to highly recommend to any new player is to check out the Offline with Bots mode. This is where you can really jump in, kind of familiarize yourself with the different maps and rule sets of the game in a completely hassle-free, worry-free environment. You, know, you can learn all the different weapons, you can learn all the different systems of the game, you can learn the layouts of the maps and how everything basically functions without really putting yourself out there in a situation where you're going to have to immediately compete against people who've been playing this game for 10 plus years. So let's check this mode out. So you're going to have access to basically all of the different modes that are available in the game. You got this arms race mode, which is a lot like uh, Gun Game or Gun Master in Call of Duty and Battlefield, where you basically start out with a pistol, and each time you get kills, uh, you get the next weapon in the sequence. And once you've sequenced through all of the weapons, you uh, are left with the knife, and you have to get a knife kill to win. Um, these modes have become super popular in Call of Duty and Battlefield. I'm sure that's the reason why it's been put in here. I haven't even tried this mode in Counter-Strike yet, to be honest with you, because I am more of a classic Counter-Strike player. And I'll tell you, the main reason for that is that the thing that I really like about Counter-Strike that really appeals to me about it is the idea of having one life per round. Uh, basically that being that you know you have these teams of 5 vs 5 or 10 vs 10 or however many people are in the server and each person only gets one life and once they're dead they're spectating for the rest of the round and I think that adds a level of strategy and tension and value to to the gameplay that I think is just immediately lost as soon as you're in a situation like this where you're respawning constantly and it just becomes sort of like a deathmatchy kind of meat grindery kind of experience. You know, we'll give this a shot on the video here, maybe at the end, uh, just to see if I'm right or wrong about that assertion. But just to let you know, that's what that mode is all about, and that's why I'm not going to focus on it here. Demolition, similar thing. It's basically the classic Counter-Strike objective-based gameplay, but with gun cycling mechanic from the arms race mode. Uh, 
Okay, so classic casual and classic competitive. These basically represent the main Counter-Strike modes that kind of are the bread and butter of this franchise. This is you going in with the counter-terrorists or the terrorists, uh, setting up bombs, defusing bombs, uh, rescuing hostages or preventing them from being rescued, you know, whatever the particular map objective is, is what you're going to do uh, in this mode. Casual mode uh, gives you a lot more uh, freedom to kind of go in and spray bullets. You can see friendly fire is off, uh, team collision is off, so you can run right through your teammates, uh, you know, stuff like that that's going to make it a lot easier and a lot kind of softer core of an experience uh, so this is the this is the the what this game is all about for me this is your classic competitive mode this is what most people who play this game are coming to it for you know there is friendly fire you can run into your teammates and get in their way so you have to worry about your movement and, and making your way through the level properly um, you know this is this is to me what Counter-Strike is and has always been and probably always will be. So we're going to start out with this. So we'll go with the classic competitive. You see it's defaulting us to the office, which is a hostage rescue mission. So we will go with that and just say, hey, what's up? Now you can see I've been experimenting with the, uh, the hard bots. But we're just going to back this way, way down and show you. Uh, you can see there, there, you can actually have no bots. But we'll just go with normal bots uh, to give you an idea, or sorry, harmless bots, uh, just to give you an idea of how the bots move around and uh, what their capabilities are. Now, what you're going to find on this setting is that the bots are not really going to present any kind of real credible threat to you. It's just going to give you an idea of how they move around you know what their capabilities are that sort of thing and you'll notice there's no achievement progression associated with this mode so if you're looking for achievements you're gonna have to at least go with easy bots but let me tell you easy bots are pretty darn easy uh, they're, they're kind of pushovers it's not till you get up to medium that they start to provide any sort of real challenge you know easy bots what you'll find is a lot of times you'll come up on them in an engagement and they'll just kind of sit there for a second and let you fire at them before they even open up on you. Uh, so if you're, you know, let's go with easy bots for the sake of this demo uh, and I'll just show you that and you'll see you know, obviously, um, you know, harmless bots are going to be even easier than this. So I'll just show you this and we can, you can interpolate from that uh, what the harmless ones would be like. So when you get into a game of Counter-Strike, there's a few things you need to know. Uh, one is the knife makes you faster. Uh, that's kind of become like a meme or a little bit of a joke, but it's still totally true. If you're running around the level and you're trying to get from place to place, the thing you're going to want to do uh, if you really want to gain a little tactical advantage on your opponents is to pull out your knife. Uh, which will let you move slightly faster through the level. Just be sure to pull up your primary weapon uh, before you get into the game uh, proper. So in this loadout area at the beginning of the match you have the ability to buy uh, weapons and upgrades and things like that. I'll cover that in a second but just so you know uh, the one key is your primary weapon, two is your pistol, three is your knife. So if you pull out the knife, see me running around like a crazy person, see I'm actually gaining ground on this bot that's in front of me. Switch to the pistol. Now you, the thing you're going to notice right away is that there are no iron sights in this game. You pretty much have to fire using the crosshairs. <laughs> and of course, trying to do commentary and do this at the same time is always slightly problematic, so I'm going to blame the commentary for that quite obvious death that I should have avoided. But uh, let's try that again. So you'll notice that I'm using uh, the traditional kind of classic crosshairs and I've turned them to yellow. I find that this is just the easiest uh, way to see this. So let's see if this guy's going to come around the corner on us. Oh, we got our... Alright, so you see there 
I had a guy in front of me. Standing still is generally going to get you killed. Like, I'm... That's probably the biggest mistake that I'm making right here, is because I'm not giving these bots enough credit for being skilled uh, enough to hit me before I line the shot up. What I really should be doing, and what I'll start doing as soon as this round ends, is actually moving and shooting. The thing about Counter-Strike is, you got to kind of ignore some of the things that you've been training yourself to do in other more realistic games. Like, obviously, uh, planting your feet and lining up a shot and taking it is an appropriate course of action in a game like, say, Arma or Battlefield even, where the ballistics are a little more realistic. Like, this is... Think of this as like a John Woo action film where you're just kind of running around, guns blazing, strafing as you're firing, and it's not really affecting your bullet accuracy very much at all. I mean, you really just kind of run around, line up your shots with your crosshairs, and pull the trigger. The crosshairs basically dictate everything in the game. Uh, so just for the sake of making life a little easier for me, I'm going to hit the F1 key, which is automatically going to equip me with whatever uh, the best equipment available to me based on the money that I've accumulated is. And that's important because, you know, you obviously if you come up against a guy with an assault rifle when you're using a pistol, uh, you're automatically at a pretty, pretty severe disadvantage. So you can see, I'm shooting from the hip here. There is no iron sight in this game. Never has been. Probably never will be. So you're, you're kind of left pretty much completely dependent on the crosshair for your aim. Oop, sorry, buddy. Uh, oop. And you'll notice that I'm kind of burst firing here. Oh. It's because you're not particularly accurate. Um, oh, I ran out of ammo there. I should have been. Uh, what I should have done was ducked around that corner and reloaded. But again, trying to do the commentary and play at the same time is extremely difficult. I'm sure some of you out there have done, tried to do stuff like this before and know what I'm talking about. Um, so here you see the bot, <laughs> our friendly bot, is trying to actually rescue the hostages. And what you'll see if he turns around, in theory, is that the hostages should not be following him. Basically, when you're the counter-terrorists, your objective is to get these hostages to come and follow you by hitting the E key when you walk up to them, and then lead them back to where you basically started the level where those vans are. Uh, and you can see, this is this is kind of how the bots behave and how their aim works, right? Like, he eventually lined up that shot and took that guy out, but uh, he took his good sweet time doing it. So that gives you a, a very good idea of what the bot mechanics are like on this easy mode, uh, which is why it's super embarrassing that I've been getting killed by them, but whatever. <laughs> good job. Good job, counter-terrorists. You're carrying me. My bots are totally carrying me. This is awesome. All right, F1. Let's get a weapon up. And actually, let me let me play around here without the commentary, so I can just try to redeem myself a little bit and give you a better sense of what it's like to play this for real. You know, there was way too many of them right there for me to continue in that engagement. If I'd have stuck around there, I would definitely gotten smoked. Uh, so I just back off a little bit, wait for them to come to me, do a little pray and spray, back off so that I can reload. So it's basically about trying to take your shot without giving them theirs. Obviously, I can get around. Down to two. Oop. There's that guy. Only one left. Had some help there from my teammate, which I will never turn my back on. Anyone else hear that? Let's see if we can get this last guy. And you know, depending on how familiar you are with FPS, you know, easy bots might be a challenge. 
you know, I, I certainly have gotten killed by them enough in this video to show that they can put you down if you're not careful. Uh, I'm going to just grab these hostages real quick. Hopefully... Okay, so they got that last guy, so I, I didn't even have to worry about getting these guys, but you can see how they'll follow you once you hit the E key on them. That's the main thing I wanted to show. So again, you can auto-equip. Uh, next round, I'll bring up the um, the buy menu, which is the B key, which lets you go in and, and be very specific about the items that you want to purchase, you know, whether it's Kevlar or grenades or different weapons. There's all sorts of different weapons in the game uh, that have varying capabilities. Uh, one thing you might be wondering is what Oh my goodness, what am I on that I'm missing all these shots is what I'm wondering. Um, you know, what is it that each weapon does instead of iron sights, right? Because you know you got the right mouse button uh, that you would normally use to bring up iron sights in most other games. Uh, and so since that's not the case here... Dance! And you see strafing like moving, just those little tweaks to my movement in most cases are going to be enough to make those guys miss. You know, as long as you stay on the move, uh, the bots generally aren't going to be good enough at this level to compensate for it. You know, if that were a human player, he probably would have anticipated my movements there and taken me out. But again, easy bots, just for demonstration purposes, uh, just to give you an idea what it's like. The other thing I'll say is, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm playing FPS, I usually have to warm up a little bit before my kind of reflexes kick in and I start actually hitting anything with any degree of accuracy. So that's what's kind of happening here. You're seeing my aims getting a little better as I play more. Alright, so we've got uh, all these different things you can do, all these different categories of weapons. You've got this gear category, which is important. You can buy that Kevlar and helmet. That was the only gear piece I was kind of missing there. That makes you just a little more durable. So kind of rifles we got here. Uh, this, M this M4A4 has been treating me pretty good so far. We'll stick with that. Uh, but I just wanted to show the purchase interface. And obviously, if you spend a lot of time here at the beginning of the round purchasing stuff, uh, you're not going to be in position, uh, you know, for the rest of the round. So a really good feature you want to know about is once you've decked out yourself with the loadout that you want, uh, you can hit the F2 key in subsequent rounds to automatically buy the last uh, loadout that you had set up. Oop, sorry, guy. That was just bad uh, target identification on my part. Um, But, uh, what the hell? <laughs> Sorry, that's embarrassing. I don't know why I keep mistaking my own guys for enemies there. Um, again, I'll blame the commentary on that. Uh, so the thing about uh, the weapon selection and buying uh, the same kit over again is it just saves you a lot of time. You know, like if you know you want a frag and uh, a certain type of assault rifle and you're just gonna keep doing that every time then you just buy all that stuff once when the new round ends or you die uh, and you want to replenish your supplies and all that you just hit F2 and it'll just keep giving you the same thing that you bought uh, in each previous round so it just makes it a lot easier and a lot more fluid so you can be ready to go as soon as the round starts you know a lot of times when people first start they hit the B key and bring up that buy menu at the beginning of every round and waste a lot of time uh, just getting the equipment that they want ready to go. But it, you can see the bots are pretty adaptive even at this level and, and as the levels progress and they start getting access to more money because obviously based on your performance in the previous level you get more you get access to more and better gear. So they're going to have better weapons. Even though I'm doing the same engagement here in this stairwell that I did previously, you know, the guns that they're using against me are better. Uh, the stuff that they have 
at their disposal gear wise is better so they're able to do things that they weren't able to do before and that kind of spices things up even though um, you know the bots are basically staying at the same difficulty level Down to two. I probably should lower my mouse sensitivity a little bit it's a little bit too twitchy because I'm used to games that don't pan quite this quick and I think my sensitivity might be a little too high that's why I'm overshooting some of these guys when I gotta line these shots up um. hey buddy <laughs> and a, you know a higher level bot probably would have checked his flank there when he came around that corner and probably even gotten a shot off on me but that basically gave me time to just line that shot up identify him clearly as an enemy and take him out again you know, just the bot difficulty that I'm playing at is what's making that possible. So uh, I'm not going to play, I think I'll play just one more round of this and maybe we'll switch maps and uh, let you see a little bit more. Maybe uh, we'll go to a different scenario, uh, like a bomb planting scenario and you can see what that's like. I don't think I'm going to uh, subject myself to more difficult bots as I try to comment on this stuff though, because as we've established, I'm kind of having a hard time as it is. Oh! Oh, that was not good. <laughs> that was very not good. That, but again, standing still was what really killed me there, because basically holding my position, trying to line that shot up, is what gave him the opportunity to just peg me. Uh, because even at this difficulty level, you know, once they line the shot up, they're gonna, they're very rarely gonna miss. Thank you, bots. Thank you for saving my dignity, at least some shred of it. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's uh, back up to the main menu here. And uh, let's jump back into the play with bots mode. Same deal, but let's switch to a map that I know is going to be familiar to at least some of you. Dust. This is probably the map that people most associate with this game. This is uh, one that involves bomb disposal. And uh, actually... Alright, so I'm back. Uh, not sure what was up with that crash, but... Uh, that is the first time that's happened since I started playing this, uh, so hopefully that was a rare occurrence. We'll see. But uh, as you can see, I have selected the terrorists, uh, which means on this map I'm going to be planting this sweet bomb. Uh, but of course I'm going to bring my pistol out uh, for now. Uh, the bomb is actually the 5 key, so uh, something to keep in mind. I'm going to follow these guys to this objective. Try to make my way to where this bomb needs to be planted. I always get these maps confused, to be perfectly honest with you. I can never remember. Oh wait, here it is. Alright, so hold the E key to plant the bomb on the very obvious spot. And then let's chill out back here and see if anybody shows up to disarm it. Now at a certain point, if the uh, counter-terrorists don't make their way here in time... Man. Win. <laughs> that was terrible. I can't believe he didn't kill me before I, uh, before I got that shot off. But again, easy bots. Yay. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let me auto-equip. F1 is really your friend sometimes, like, especially in a situation like this where I'm thinking about like five different things at the same time, like to not have to actually go through those gear menus and pick the stuff and just be able to hit that F1 key and get a fairly reliable uh, set of equipment is nice. 
uh, obviously more experienced you are and the faster you can work through those menus uh, the less likely you'll be to do that but for beginners I highly recommend it oh man these guys are like right up there now obviously because I'm carrying the bomb I want to let these guys do as much of the work as I can Oh damn! Because the whole point. Oh, yeah, that took all them out. The whole point is, you know, me trying to get this bomb to where it needs to go and plant it. So if I run out in front and get myself killed, that's kind of counter to what we're trying to accomplish. So, um, you know, there's that. That's why you know, I kind of hung back there and let the bots do the dirty work because. If I go and get killed, then somebody else has got to pick up the bomb. They've got to basically pick up the slack for me screwing up. Now, this may be a mistake in that I went off in this direction kind of by myself. Which I probably should not have done because I am carrying the bomb. Yeah, that was, that was a mistake. I should have stuck with my with my teammates and where they were going and let them kind of protect me, but I kind of wanted to see what I could do there. And that's the thing, you know, when you play online, that'll get you yelled at. You know, if you got the bomb and you go running off by yourself, your teammates will be like, what the hell are you doing? Uh, although we'll talk about online play a little later. But, you know, just to kind of illustrate the difference between this mode and the other, I feel like I've always kind of felt this way, that the terrorists have a pretty distinct advantage in this mode. And I'll tell you why. Because I think planting the bomb and preventing it from being blown up in general is easier than uh, defusing it. And, and preventing it from being planted in the first place. And uh, the reason I say that is because once you have gained some familiarity with the map and you kind of know where things are, it's going to be pretty easy for you to make your way to the objectives, get that bomb planted, and uh, need to back off here because I'm going to have to reload, um, and defend it. You know, it's it's not a it's not a particularly difficult thing uh, once you've oh come on guys oh that's bad that's bad very bad for me all right where are you at oh my god if my aim were not absolutely abysmal I could probably pull this out there we go Wow. Thank you, easy bots. Alright, let me see if I can get in here and slap this thing. Oop! Hey, buddy. Uh, should have expected that. That was rookie mistake on my part, not checking my flank as I came through that door. That guy was just camping there waiting for me. Ugh. So dumb. But those are the kind of things you learn you know, as you get more familiar with the map. I'll, I'll be honest with you, as popular as this map is, and as, as much as it kind of has become the defining map for Counter-Strike, it's probably one of the ones that I've spent the least amount of time on. So knowing all the little ins and outs of it is a little, my memory of it's a little rusty. And also I believe, if I recall correctly, that the layout of this map was changed slightly for this version of the game. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, that I, it might be that my fuzzy recollection has to do with it actually being slightly changed. In addition to me having not played it for a while. Because I'll tell you the, the honest truth, I probably haven't played Counter-Strike in any form in a couple of years now. Yeah, this has certainly brought me back into the game uh, in a way that I had not been for many years. So I'm going to 
kind of credit that for some of my issues here. Uh, oh, so one other thing about this bot mode, if you want to take over one of these bots, like say I want to just become this guy, you know, and try to try to make something happen here, uh, I have that option, which is nice. I cannot see them anymore. Why? Am I not finding it? Okay. Oh good, one of our bots picked up that bomb. What's up, buddy? Alrighty. How we doing? Oh, we're doing fine. <laughs> I'm not too worried. Yeah, even even with my lousy performance here, still managing to hold it down. Be safe. Let's go, my friends. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I think I usually take this path on this map. I think this is the one that I find myself most frequently using. Although it's the other way. It's actually where I want to be. sloppy but I'll take it <laughs> trying to remember exactly oh that's right that's the one where it's out in the middle of the open area that's why I keep forgetting about it sweet all right time to get serious you know I, I know a lot of people religiously use the knife in this game all the time I actually kind of think it's a little bit of a joke because like the difference it makes in your movement speed is so negligible but whatever people are into it they'll swear by it love it and you know it's cool it's cool bro cool story bro <laughs> they are not here they are not here yeah me personally I'd rather have my gun out all the time because God knows my aim is terrible enough that I need all the help I can get. Hopefully these guys can cover me while I get this thing down. Good times. I always like to try to find at least a halfway decent cover scenario. Really make them work for it if they're going to try to come in and take a shot on me. We got a couple of bots here and timers getting close. Now one thing is when you know the timer is going to go off no matter what it's really in your best interest to get away from it because if you get caught in that explosion you're going to have to rebuy all your gear and stuff. So whatever it's a sure thing that you're going to win the round it's time to get out. Uh, so let's do one more round on this map and maybe we'll switch it up uh, and, tr and try one of those other modes. But I think this gives you a pretty good idea what this game is all about. I don't want to, I don't want to just dwell on this too long and um, you know waste a bunch of time. Obviously, if I was playing the counter terrorists right now, my job would be to defeat. Well, obviously, prevent the bomb from being placed in the first place, but also defuse it if it does get uh, placed. And you see now we're getting into the later rounds and people are getting access to more uh, crazy weaponry and such. And that's making it a lot easier to get in and do this stuff. How are you guys not dead? I mean, I thought I... Damn. Yeah, as you can see, uh, you know, enemies can be kind of bullet spongy 
in this game. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Like, don't expect, unless you get a headshot, don't expect to be dropping people uh, right away. You're going to have to, to dump some rounds into them. Uh, and, and that's something you just have to get used to from practice. Uh, so as I said before, uh, let's just do one quick round or two with the arms race mode so you can see what that's all about. I actually have not even tried this yet. Uh, and uh, this is actually a map that I don't think I've ever been on, so this should be super interesting. <laughs> let's give it a try. Alright, we had a slight technical difficulty there where the footage that I originally recorded for this uh, section got erased somehow. Not exactly sure how that happened, but we'll work around it. So, resuming here with this arms race mode on this new map. Uh, full disclosure, since I played it once to uh, capture the footage that got lost, this is actually my second time playing the map, so I'm a little more familiar with it this time than I was when I first recorded this. But, should still be good times. Alrighty, so this is still a team-based mode. I'm going to go with the counter-terrorists, and uh, since there are no weapons or equipment to buy, uh, there's no purchase menu available here. You're just going to work your way through these weapons as quickly as you can, getting as many kills as you can. And then as you get kills, you will advance to the next weapons. It seems like every time you uh, advance to a new weapon... Oh, I kind of just stood there and took that. But uh, it seems like every time you advance to a new weapon, you automatically get a full clip of that weapon. Uh, which makes it pretty cool. Like, say you completely dump on a guy to kill him, and then you end up switching to a new weapon as a result of getting that kill then uh, you're not going to have to worry about reloading that new weapon. Probably should not be hanging out here in the middle of the level like that, but just kind of trying to zip around here and get as many kills as I can as quickly as possible. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Come on, that was fun. Alright, looking around, looking around, looking around. Having already been through this once before, it feels a little uh, less uh, crazy than it did whenever I first played it. I wish I hadn't lost that footage, but these things happen. Alright, time to get a little more aggressive, I think. nearly fast enough. Oh, okay, so you see where dumping sometimes does not work to your advantage. Like, if I'd have uh, done some burst fire there, I probably would have got that guy, but because I just went full auto kind of running at him, I lost all the accuracy of that weapon and basically just ended up not getting it done. Which, uh, you know, that's part of the Counter-Strike way, right? You just have to find that balance between unloading on a guy and moving or staying stationary uh, there's really just a sweet spot you have to try to attain and once you do and you kinda get your your play style dialed in uh, it's pretty easy to succeed in this game oh, what am I doing taking a shotgun shot at that range I must be cray cray that was cray cray I shouldn't have even tried that alright so clearly I need to get into like a a CQC kind of situation, like maybe in some of these windy little hallways. I'm going to want to try to avoid the open area as much as I can, because it's really not going to work to the advantage of this weapon. So until I get through the shotgun, I'm going to want to try to keep it nice and up 
close and personal if I can. Oh my god, that was embarrassing. <laughs> that should have been one shot instead of three, but I'll take it. Wow. Good one. Yeah, here's where the easy bots are definitely helping me out. But you can only go to that well so often before they finally dial in on you. And I definitely got a few free kills there. Let's see what we can do. I notice they seem to be congregating over in this main room on the other side, so it seems to be their spawn-in area, much like we have one on this side. So I'm kind of trying to... Oop. Sorry, buddy. Uh, kind of trying to make my way over and into that parallel structure. Nice shot. I like a little encouragement, even if it is from an artificially intelligent commentator. <laughs> I am good. I'm special. I'm a delicate snowflake. A bloody delicate snowflake. Anyway, um, as you can see, this is a lot more frenetic, a lot more action-oriented. Obviously, with the respawns, uh, it's going to be a lot less tactical than only having one life per round. But, you know, with this gameplay mode, you've got to make some concessions because obviously if you're supposed to be working through a sequence of guns, it's unrealistic to think that everybody's going to live long enough to do that. You know, you'd very quickly have somebody just winning by virtue of killing everyone else if everybody only got one life. <laughs> But uh, having a good old time here. You know, this is probably not the mode I would choose to play in this game for the most part. I'd probably stick to the more classic traditional modes. I mean, if I want to play something like this, I might as well be playing Battlefield or Call of Duty or whatever. But you know, this is fine. It's a fine little extra addition. A nice little, like, value added feature for the game. I certainly don't have anything against it being in here, but it's probably not the way I would choose to play for the most part. Yeah, probably should have dealt with the guy who was closer there, but yeah, whatevs. What evskies? That's a convenient spawn for a little revenge there. Thought I saw an enemy behind that, but it was just our other guy creeping like a fiend around that corner. It's about to turn into a real pit of death here. I need to get a, get a little elevation. Too slow, bot. Stealing your kills. Oh, that's how I roll. guy. That was not quite quick enough. It's alright. You'll have that from time to time. Let's see if I can wrap this up. <laughs> that was uh, not my best move. Also, not my best move. It's, it's really hard to fight that temptation to want to just line up the shot and take that moment of being still because in a lot of other games it serves you really well you know but this is not one of them you, in this game if you're not moving you're pretty much dead <laughs> it's what it boils down to or, or well on your way to dying so that's something to keep in mind oop, 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 oop. taking 
way too much falling damage here. You know, sometimes just that little bit of extra movement, that little bit of making them work for the shot is the difference between life and death in this game. more of a I said I tend to fare better in these CQC kind of engagements so I tend to favor these kind of close in uh, hallways little zigzag little coming around a corner on a guy getting the drop on him kind of scenario being out there in the meat grinder not so much Now that I'm getting a higher degree of familiarity with this map, I'm kind of wanting to really come on. Ooh, 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 ooh! Fire bad. Fire very bad. Duck in here. Oop! Sorry, buddy. kind of rough whenever you're switching between the guns dynamically sometimes to know what your like rate of fire should be. That's one thing that's a little bit weird about this. It's like not knowing off the top of your head like how many rounds you have per clip. You know, or how long you're going to get to go before you have to reload. Alright, so I'm about to wrap this thing up. I just need to get myself a knife kill. See that guy was spawning in there so he was invulnerable to me for a hot second there but that wore off and he couldn't get enough time there to take his shot before I was able to finish him off so obviously a player wouldn't have made it that easy but you know, for purposes of demonstration that kind of shows you what this mode is all about so good times uh, I think that gives you a pretty good sense of what this version of Counter-Strike is all about and what Counter-Strike in general is all about if you've never had the opportunity to check it out before uh, there you have it but uh, just a few things I'd like to mention before I wrap this up um, with regard to online play I know for myself in my own personal experience I feel like Counter-Strike is a very difficult community to break into uh, to be perfectly honest with you, most of the times when I've played it online uh, and I've been in a situation where I'm commu trying to communicate with other players or trying to you know, get into pickup groups or random you know, uh, public servers, I've just not really had a good time with it. And I think a lot of that basically comes down to uh, the vast majority of people playing on random public servers falling into one of two categories. You've basically got you know, people who are just looking to grief and give people a hard time uh, just because that's what they do and that's part of their online identity or persona. And then you've got people who are real super hardcore into Counter-Strike, have been playing it for years, know all the ins and outs of every map and every weapon and everything that you can do in the game, and just get, you know, for lack of a better term, offended by people who haven't put as much time into the game as they have. And fortunately, uh, for new players, there's a real simple way to deal with both of these uh, types of people. Uh, it's very easy, just go into Help and Options, go under Audio Settings, and go to Enable Voice and disable that bad boy. And what that's basically going to do is it's going to eliminate your ability to talk to other players and eliminate their ability to talk to you. So if you're not on you know, a private Ventrilo or TeamSpeak server with your friends, you know, you're not going to have to suffer through, you know, any indignities or any, you know, of the typical nonsense that you find in a lot of public uh, servers on a lot of different first-person shooters. And uh, it basically just lets you enjoy the game. You know, uh, there's certainly a, an amount of griefing that can take place in any sort of team slash objective based game 
uh, obviously when friendly fire and player collisions and stuff like that are involved like you know if people are of a mind that they want to cause you grief in the game they can find other ways to do that other than yelling at you through their microphone but at least this kind of eliminates that scenario where you join a public server and you're just immediately barraged with you know heinous racist sexist you know bigoted comments and it allows you to just get in and enjoy the game you know in a multiplayer setting where you're competing against other actual human players um having said that if if it's up to me and i'm gonna play this game most of the time i'm gonna exercise the option to use a private server uh, and it's real simple you just go in under play and you just say play with friends and that'll connect you up and start a lobby and then anyone else who might be on will be on your friends list and you can just simply say instead of a public match switch it to private and then that way you'll join into that game uh, you'll have bots online with you that uh, you can use to spar against until some of your friends join in and you know you can team up with your friends on the same team versus the bots you can split up on opposing teams and have bots backing you up it's just a nice pleasant kind of experience uh, that you can have with people that you know in the game so you know to a certain extent I really have to give them credit for creating a version of the game that supports all manner of play styles you know if you want to get in here by yourself and just spar against the bots you can do that you can even earn achievements doing that if you play at a high enough difficulty level if you want to play just with your friends in a nice private match you can do that you want to jump in and play with other random people you can do that but uh, I think that's the main point that I want to get across is I think a lot of people think of Counter-Strike and they think of it as a game that's totally unapproachable and something that's just you know cryptic and has all these sort of weird uh, rules and nuances to it that if you haven't been playing it all along you can't ever possibly overcome that hurdle uh, and I, I don't think that that's really the case and I think that this particular version of the game as I said at the beginning probably does more than any of the previous versions to help combat those issues so if if you were ever going to jump in with this game this is probably the time to do it you know it's uh, a mere 15 bucks on steam i'm sure at some point in the future that'll be discounted on some sale or some price reduction but you know for 15 bucks there's a decent variety of gameplay here and maps and options that I think it's a worthwhile investment for anyone who's interested in checking the game out. Uh, assuming that, of course, you are cool with a lot of the unique characteristics of it that I mentioned previously, such as there being no iron sights and that sort of thing. So, um, I'm going to wrap it up. I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about uh, with regard to this game. Hopefully this has been... Uh, informative and or interesting or at least somewhat entertaining for you folks and uh, I'll be back with more later. <laughs>